If you're looking to build your very first computer but have been holding off because you don't want to overpay for a graphics card, then this video may be the solution for you. If you already have a functioning computer though, even if it's a few years old, or if you're dead set on building an ultra high-end PC, then this video won't be as relatable, but I do appreciate you being here and watching anyway. For those targeting the mid-range though, you should definitely consider AMD's recent line of APUs, which are, as of making this video, in stock and readily available, and they provide a great foundation for when the graphics card shortage does eventually end and you can reliably get one without getting ripped off. This build right here next to me utilizes one of those newer APUs, and I worked with Micro Center to put it together, and they've been a great partner of the channel and have been exemplary when it comes to ensuring graphics cards are fairly being distributed to PC builders throughout the pandemic, with in-person raffle systems put in place that prevent scalpers and online bots from buying them all up. Right now, Micro Center is also running a special offer for new customers to receive a free 240GB SSD. More details on this in the description below. But let's go over the parts in this build, which I'll have everything shown in this video linked down below. Uh, I'll also include links to Amazon and Newegg for those of you who don't have a Micro Center nearby, because this build is made up of parts that are for the most part uh, in stock and priced similarly across all sellers. The start of the build is the Ryzen 5 5600G. This APU will be carrying the entire build on its back, acting as both the CPU and GPU. This is a 6-core 12-thread processor that, like most of the Ryzen 5 chips before it, offers solid performance and caters to multiple types of users without breaking the bank. Whether you're gaming, streaming, content creating, you name it, this CPU is a great choice. And on top of that, it has Vega 7 integrated graphics built in, which performs very similar to a GT 1030. This processor launched at $260 and has already seen price reductions as low as $240 and even as low as $220. Compared to the 5600X, this is about 10% slower due to having half the L3 cache and lower boost clocks. And it also doesn't have PCIe 4.0 support, but Despite those things, it still provides a tremendous amount of value and is able to deliver a passable temporary gaming experience on that Vega graphics as you see later on in the benchmarks. We're sticking with the stock cooler for this build because I actually like the AMD stock coolers and why not since it's already included and the IGP would be the bottleneck anyway so it's not like we need any crazy performance from the CPU side of things. The motherboard we're pairing with the 5600G is the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max 2. This is the latest revision of the popular B450 Tomahawk line, now with support for Ryzen 5000 series processors so you don't have to worry about updating the BIOS for support. I didn't go with the B550 board because I would rather use a good B450 than a low quality entry level B550, which are still surprisingly priced pretty high solely for the fact that they're the latest chipset, but they can be embarrassingly bad, like oftentimes lacking basic things uh, like USB-C support or any resemblance of a cooling solution for the VRMs. Also, since the 5600G doesn't support PCIe 4.0, there's no harm with sticking with B450. For memory, we're going with 16 gigabytes of Team Group T-Force Delta RGB at 3200 MHz CL16. 3200 MHz is what AMD lists as what the 5600G supports. However, I did run some side tests with 3600 MHz and saw up to 10% gains in FPS and synthetic scores. So if you're able to find faster RAM for the same price or are willing to pay a little bit more for faster speeds, then by all means go for it. It does benefit the Vega 7 graphics because in this case, the video memory is the system memory. For storage, we're going with a one terabyte Inland Premium NVMe SSD. This is a tried and true TLC drive with DRAM cache and read and write speeds plenty fast for all use cases. This is a very solid drive that often comes at a discount compared to the bigger name brand without making major compromises. For the power supply, we've got the EVGA 750BQ. This is a budget semi-modular unit with the full suite of protections that you'd want in a modern power supply. These now have over temperature protection, which was the only protection missing in the previous revisions that caused professional reviewers to dock some points off of it, but OTP has been added. 750 watts is definitely overkill for a simple APU build like this one, but the goal here is to eventually upgrade to dedicated graphics, which 750 watts will have plenty of headroom for a wide range of cards down the line. If you know exactly what graphics card you have your eye set on though, like let's say something in the mid-range like the RTX 3060 or RX 6600 XT, you can go ahead and save some money by going with a lower wattage unit. Last but not least, the case we're putting all these components into, the Lee and Lee 205 mesh. This is part of Lee and Lee's 205 line of cases, which I've built in multiple times in the past, and they're all really well-built cases, but this is my first time building in the mesh version, and I'm happy to say that this is an easy recommendation for me. This case has a sleek and simple exterior design, 
great airflow, three included adjustable RGB fans, two of which are 140 millimeters in the front and a 120 millimeter rear fan. It has tempered glass, a power supply basement, and attention to detail with regards to cutout placement and space for cable management. This is a bit pricey coming in at just over $100, but it's a great case that can last you through multiple upgrade cycles. I personally like to try out different cases for the sake of changing it up in build videos and not just use like the same couple popular ones over and over. But by all means, definitely choose something that's based on your preference and budget. The case is one of the most flexible parts of a build aside from making sure the motherboard fits in. Uh, you can, for the most part, change that out and not really have to worry about the performance that you're gonna see later on in the video changing as long as you know, you're not thermal throttling it because there's no airflow or something like that. Taking a look at the parts list and price summary, this build in the configuration I have it comes in just under $700 at the time of me choosing the parts if you take into account the Micro Center discount. There are ways to knock the price down if you're working with a smaller budget. Going with a micro ATX motherboard, something like the ASRock B450M Pro 4 is a really solid alternative option. You can go with a smaller SSD if you really don't need that full terabyte. Going with a lower wattage power supply, depending on what graphics card you know you're gonna end up with. And choosing a cheaper case, which there are plenty in the $50 price range, can bring this total price down to well below $600, even without that micro center discount. All these changes also won't impact the performance that you'll see in the upcoming benchmarks. So it's really dependent on how much you have to spend and what you intend to do with the build in the future. Okay, now let's get into the performance. For overclocking, I didn't do anything too crazy since we're still on the stock cooler. So what I was able to achieve should be achievable on most, if not all 5600 Gs. I'm running the CPU at 4.4 gigahertz on all cores and the Vega 7 iGPU is at 2250 megahertz up from the 1900 megahertz stock. The memory is running at the rated 3200 megahertz XMP. I tested this build against a wide range of titles from easy to run esports games to AAA releases. The settings were dependent on the game being tested uh, with the goal of never dropping below 30 FPS average all while maintaining a resolution of 1080p uh, and not running into any stuttering. Uh, so yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy the benchmarks. So there you have it. 
despite the graphic setting having to be turned down in a majority of the titles, it still gave what I would consider to be a playable experience on all the titles except for Cyberpunk. And I think it's definitely passable as a temporary solution. There was no noticeable stuttering, which to me is the single biggest thing that can ruin my gaming experience. And with Cyberpunk being the only title that didn't hit 30 FPS average, I'd call that a victory considering how demanding it is and we're on integrated graphics. I did go back and tested Cyberpunk at 720p just out of curiosity and that was able to hit above 30 FPS average. So there's that if you're really dying to play Cyberpunk on an APU. If you're a person without a PC and are patient enough to continue waiting, uh, then by all means, definitely wait. Whether it be for the next few months or even up to a year, I commend you uh, for your patience. But if you've been itching for a computer, especially if you're doing other things alongside gaming, like consuming media, content creation, schoolwork, things like that, then the 5600G is a viable option that will still allow you to get some gaming in and it's gonna be a great processor long after you decide to put a dedicated GPU into it. It brings a ton of value to the table and provides a good solution for low cost systems without having to rely on like one-off use parts deals because again, one of the huge benefits of these are how readily available and in stock they are and how well they're priced. Those are my thoughts anyways. I'd love to hear what you think, whether you've been lucky enough to have bought a graphics card during this whole shortage, or if you're still going strong on an existing system that you already own, or if you're one of those people who are in desperate need of a new computer and have been waiting to pull the trigger, I'd love to hear the opinions from all the camps down in the comment section below. That's gonna wrap it up for this video though. I hope you enjoyed and found this useful or entertaining in one way or another. I wanna give a big thanks to Micro Center for being an amazing ongoing partner of the channel. And I of course wanna thank you all as always for watching and for your continued support. I look forward to reading your thoughts down in the comment section below. So I'll see you down there as well as in the next video. Bye.